it was wrong of Labor to overly personalise what was cyclical, but that's what they did, right? They put they put forward in sort of electoral and political greed that this is a problem, we're going to solve it. They can now turn around and say, oh, we're spending $26 billion and that's going to reduce inflation by half a percent. Well, guess what? There's still five and a bit to go, right? That's before there's zero inflation, but then you can knock... Uh, we're going to get down to three to two. There's still a lot of money to go in terms of that cost of living. Let's talk about fuel tax. I bang on about it every night because it's one of those things that will not be inflationary, that if they take $3 billion off the $20 billion they've got in the surplus, they drop it by $0.25 cents for six months, and then we'll see what happens with the world oil price. If they've got to do it again, they've still got money in the surplus. This is the automatic thing they have to do to show they get it. Paul, I've got a list. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> one. I hate to burst Joe's bubble, but here's, here's the reality. Yep, they can do something on fuel prices, but guess what they did do? In the last budget, they put up the heavy vehicle, vehicle fuel charge. Correct. So it's actually, it's actually increased the cost of diesel for delivering food and everything that gets moved on logistics. They've spent an extra $180 billion in the budget, uh, the, very mo the most recent one. They've got $40 billion thrown at uh, wind and solar projects, which everyone says that I've seen who know what they're doing, it's going to be more than a trillion dollars. And yet they're talking about cutting infrastructure projects in places like the Bruce Highway. Well, can I tell you what? Budget's about making choices. And if you want to cut back inflation, I've got some, a, a pretty good list to pick from. And making it even riskier to drive on the Bruce Highway is not, on, not in the list. Because it's our people that are getting killed, right? It, it's not the people of Sydney and Melbourne. It's us. So I think Labor needs to have a good, hard, long, hard look at themselves. Uh, and this idea that their spending doesn't have an inflationary impact is just outright wrong. So there's things that can be done. And right now, cost of living is everything people can't afford to live. And that latest hammer blow from uh, the Reserve Bank on interest rates, that's made it worse. An elbow dozen, mate. An elbow dozen of them. That's what's happened all in their watch. Chalmers, when it was one, oh, he takes all the credit. It's exactly what they're doing right now. And people notice, right? I know all the professional political people think, oh, no-one notices, no-one sees it, no-one's watching it as granular. Guess what? They can see it, all right? And you can tell me every possible reason why you've got to go to Pacific Islands. I can tell you what normal people see, and normal people see the python getting tighter. Red all right? Re exactly. Pay attention to it. Uh, uh, but... You know, they obviously think that, you know, the ABC and Twitter will save them. But Joe wrote a great column about that, and I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> uh, but first, let's talk about Optus. Keith, again, um, look, systems go wrong. It's terrible, it's inconvenient. All of us, of course, live a digital life. Most people now don't pay with cash. I understand the consequences here. But the CEO of Optus, how hard is it to say, I don't know, we're fixing it, next month's bill is free? I mean, how hard is this? Uh, this is yeah, Media 101 whether it's an emergency, whether it's a police situation, whether it's a major outage like this that affects so many people, that you walk up to a microphone, you say, this is what's happened, this is who's affected, this is what we're doing about it, these are the updates that we'll give, uh, and we're going to sort it out as soon as we possibly can, and then you give another update in an hour or two hours. It's just really standard practice. So I don't think they'll be saying yes to Optus for much longer. Uh, they'll be saying no. And I just feel for all those individuals who have lost a day's trading off their FPOS machines, who are trying hard to keep people employed and now don't have the money to pay them. 